like it's gone well. Uh, by the way, we started to talking Reds. Uh, we're outside, uh, we're doing one of those where we're outside. We have the fluffy microphone things on, Jordan worries about it. Hopefully the sound's fine. Uh, you don't get more heart of the city than this right now, does it? This, this, you might do cutaways, Jordan, actually. We'll think about that. <laughs> this is the heart of the city. Yeah, well, we are in the heart of the city and, and Eurovision has come to us. So if you played Friday night. I haven't spoke to you about it. People probably think we talk all the time. You played Friday night, how was it? Brilliant, yeah. I mean, you've been away. I've been away, been away, to, yeah. to, to be fair to you. Um, and you are a busy man. Um, so yeah, I played. Well, so behind us is the is the Eurovision Village. So just over there, about two, well, about four hundred meters that way, um, is the arena, which was where the semi-finals were last night. The semi-final will be again on Thursday, and then obviously the final on Saturday. So all the Eurovision stuff is there. But then they've got a village, which is hundred meters that way, um, which is a big, huge stage, fifteen thousand capacity venue that they've built there. And they've got stuff on every night, and, and I play this part of the day as well. I hate yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It, it opens at midday. The stuff on all day, stuff on all evening. Brilliant entertainment. It's one, been wonderfully curated. A uh, lot to be made to play in, uh, which is boss and being given like great opportunities. But like you know, um, yesterday there was the. Uh, the National opera, you know, here and stuff doing doing Eurovision stuff. So it's it's national, it's international, but also local as well. They've they've absolutely smashed it. I love playing on Friday. It was an incredible experience. Uh, it was like being part of a, of a huge production, which which I'm not sort of normally used to. Really, we've we've been lucky to do big stuff together, but you generally do what you do normally, just with more people. Whereas this was like it was more like being in Hamilton. This this like kind of production. <laughs> I was getting stage directions down the ear. How's that going for you? All right, yeah. I mean, it, it always comes as a shock. It's like it's like brass stage left. And you're like shit. Which is that my left or your left? <laughs> I know you told me five times, um, but yeah, but. Um, but no, it was it was brilliant, and, and but I've just loved like coming down and you know having it there. We can hear it from our office, yeah. You know, so lightning seeds are on tonight, and they'll sound check a bit, and we'll be sitting there working and, and listening to Life of Ali, and, and that's no bad thing. It's no bad thing at all. Conjures many a great goal. <laughs> uh, the uh, the the other sort of thing about it, you've got to be careful, not least because I've never done Eurovision anywhere else. Yeah. So do stop me uh, if you feel as though I'm going too far. But I'm not far away from sort of concluding that just like all. Uh, European major European finals should take place in Germany. Maybe they should just do Eurovision here every year, but we theme it with the country. Just sort of know what I mean. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's a bit Spanish in a couple yeah, of years, yeah. you know. Yeah, like we've done all the Ukraine stuff here. Yeah, whoever yeah. wins, we'll share it with you. But very importantly, have it here. <laughs> yeah. No, I think I think you're right, and because because I've been looking at people who, who do a lot of these things, and they're they're blown away by Liverpool. Like apparently, touring last year, you couldn't really tell it was going on when you were around the city. <laughs> Whereas fucking hell, you can't move for it. Yeah. Um, everyone's embraced it. Everyone's having a fantastic time. You know, people who are coming here saying how welcome it is. You know, the, the weather's generally been nice. It's good again today, which is good. And I think, like, you know, the, the general feeling amongst people who are biased like us is that Liverpool There's, have smashed it, embraced it. So much going on. It's brilliant. The stuff all the way up. We, we had Laura Brown on uh, talking about with fire and rage, and that's going on all the way up from the. When I say the top of the city, what I mean is if. I mean, all of you will have been to Liverpool at some point, but on the off chance you haven't, sit, Liverpool sort of works in a. Liverpool works in a couple of weird years graphical things obviously because we're all mad and we've discussed this on shows often enough but Liverpool sort of works when we say top of town Liverpool works on an uphill to downhill to the river thing when people say that yeah. in the same way that basically the geography of the city is dominated by the northern line in, in much grander way it's all a bit mad but you'll, you'll cope with it so you go up to the top <laughs> of town you can start this with fire and rage thing that Laura have been part of which is pulls the Ukrainian aspect back into this and that's in there and that was in there on Friday night as well wasn't there was loads and loads of references back to Ukraine because it's important to remember the reason why it's here and not in uh, not in Ukraine, which is because of firstly tragic circumstances because people died, but also deeply political circumstances as well. Yeah, but when you go into the Eurovision village, the first thing you see on your right is a little Ukrainian village, and, and on there, and there's, there's Ukrainian food, there's, there's more about the culture, there's things you can watch and stuff like that. So that's the first thing that you see. And so, and the, the blue and yellow Ukrainian colours are everywhere that, that you'll still to see. Uh, and it is, and probably one of the reasons Liverpool got it, and one of the reasons why they were so impressed by the, the debate was, was that, you know, we put Ukraine sort of front and centre. And, and that is everywhere, really. And, yeah. and I've seen people in, you know, in Ukraine and get up with the scarves and stuff like that, bouncing around. And, you know, people who maybe sort of moved here since the war and have ended up here. And, and I've got Eurovision on their doorsteps as well as we have it. It's boss. It is just brilliant. Um, I, I'm loving it. I know Dan Austin went yesterday to the to the semi-final run through, and then he was messaging me afterwards like. 
like drunk on life, but also wine. <laughs> um, just go and lay, lad. You need to try and get down. So I've got to meet with you on Thursday, and I was sending it as a suggested location. <laughs> yeah. Should we go to the rehearsal? Uh, do you want to do this meeting? We'll chat between acts. Yeah, we yeah. haven't got a lot to cover, I'm sure. Uh, we can get through. We can rattle through. Uh, we're we're going to talk about uh, George Schmadka. Uh, we'll come, that'll be coming up in a minute. There's a clip from the gutter. Before then, you're doing an overview with uh, with Gutman today. There are. I mean, I know there's been a little bit of uh, discussion recently about whether or not I'm doing enough podcasts, but um, <laughs> which, 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 which came as a bit of a shock. My but okay. head fell off. Uh, I, I, saw, uh, I got Craig to show me what, uh, the, 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 the threads of the conversation on the Facebook subscribers group, which you should consider joining, as well as the Leveller, by the way, uh, the Telegram group on Leveller as well. They're all good. Uh, but I liked your response, which was, the only way you get more Neil is if you lived with them, <laughs> uh, which is actually not true. <laughs> 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 As my wife can attest, <laughs> it is absolutely not true. Uh, you would not get more Neil if you lived with me. Uh, but anyway, I'm gutted I'm not doing an overview. Yeah, I'm I mean, a gag. I'm seriously considering just high handedly well, walking I mean, in I mean, and taking a microphone spot. I mean, we could have a live audience if you want to just, uh, just chime from the side, uh, which I occasionally do on AFQ. Because it's massive, isn't it? I mean, it's three massive games. The other two have got four games left. Brighton will just put them out the pitch now. I can't be bothered. I'm not talking about Aston Villa. You know, it is, it, 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 it's got such clarity of purpose. First and foremost, we've just got to win the big three. And then secondly, we need, we need other things to go our way. We need favours. We know we need favours. We still need snookers. But we're loving every minute of the big three, the big nine. No, it's brilliant and the table's bunching up, isn't it? And listen, it's a bit of a shame that we play last this time because I really do feel like our scoreboard pressure's made a difference. I think us winning and winning and winning early and winning often has really <laughs> sort of has really helped with us. So it's a bit of a shame. But also, you know, we'll, we'll see how these, these other bums get on at the weekend. Because they are bums. You're right, it looks shot. Honestly, they look like they come back from war. <laughs> oh, like they, they, they repair, they need a bath and, and, a, and, a, and a tender, tender, loving kiss from a partner or something. And oh, I don't know, either that or putting down. I don't know. They look absolutely done. They to do me. look done. I'm hoping that I'm, I'm hoping that we do two minutes on Liverpool in this overview. To be honest with you, and we just because we're like we're just nine, win, points, nine points. Yeah, nine off. points. We're done. Yeah. If you want to talk about how we're going to get the nine points, I can do that. But for thirty seconds max, well, let's get on to these other bums yeah. and how many points they're going to lock. Drop. Yep. No, with that 100%. Uh, with that 100%. I'm, I was a bit like watching United the other day. I was a bit like, this? This is your famous Manchester United? <laughs> How can this be your famous Manchester United? Yeah. Uh, they could not get to Rome to see the Pope at this no. point. They wouldn't get as far as Solly Hull. Yeah. Well, they've got no centre-halves, which, which doesn't help. Well, we've uh, lived that reality. Yeah, we've, it doesn't. It, 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 we, and we lived the reality of how much it affects and how much it has knock-on effects and stuff yeah. like that in terms of how you play, how you build up from the back and things like that. You know, centre-halves are you know, underrated in that regard, really. They're sort of used to receiving the ball and, and getting it going. We've seen everyone get deeper. We've seen the back line get deeper. Uh, they've got no strikers because famously they only have £300 million to spend um, in the summer and, and couldn't possibly um, get a striker and it, and it was all so unfair um, on the manager who wasn't backed um, you know, after the £80 million he spent on Andy. And so it's, it, they're, in, they're in this sort of strange situation where they've got no defenders and some lad up front and, uh, yeah. and, and, they're, and they're struggling. Uh, yeah, more on that on Overview uh, as much as you want if you subscribe to the Anfield Rap or if you don't download the app and use tokens you get tokens and you can sample everything as we're going all the way through all of this sort of stuff I just hope someone's looking after Gary Neville maybe bring him down here get him to watch the lightning seeds tonight put your foot down and drive it'll be two oh, for him uh, I mean it might be but you know he'll cope <laughs> he'll cope he'll pull a funny face drink into the wine uh, they'll be gaining all over the place as far as that stuff's concerned loads and loads of pulling of faces uh, from Gary into cameras if he was to come down it'd be great if he did uh, we're going to put a clip in from Gutter, which I did yesterday with Rob, a lot of Gutman uh, at the moment, and then we're going to put this back on as it blew off John as it went on. This shit doesn't happen to Ryland. <laughs> I think on McAllister in general, my only concern as someone who's loved him for a couple of years and thinks he's great to watch, is I just ever so slightly worry. I don't worry about what happens when he's got the ball playing for us. I just ever so slightly worry about his pace and his physicality. Mm. He's clearly a really tenacious, strong footballer, but he's still not the biggest. Um, and Liverpool... I don't know what his superpower is. Um, I don't think he's got one, and I think he's a Swiss Army knife. Right. And I think that that's fine for what Liverpool wants and needs. And I'm, none of this is me talking him down, because it can sound like you're talking him down. I think he's got so many positives in loads and loads of ways, and I think he's been an important part of a big season for both club and country. And I think it's worth... You know, the, the, the intangibles matter as well. And I think that it's also... The intangibles, both in terms of what you're seeing on the pitch, in terms of practical football stuff, but also the idea of what he may well be like away from away from the pitch, elsewhere, stuff in training and all that sort of stuff, I think matters. Uh, my only 
mild concern again back to the way we're currently playing and I think he has done bits at six for Brighton yeah and I think he'd scare you a bit at six because again he's not massive and he's not he's just part really quick. of a double though isn't it really well it's that little, could work it's a little part of a double but then there's all but he's but he's not part of it. So when Gross has played right back and they've done the, the clever right back thing, he's he's been higher. And I think he looks really clever when you get him the ball. My concern is is just on on the pace and it's the pace and power aspect, which I think is important for us. I think that we need to be getting that in with, with the players that we're looking at. And I could be completely wrong, as I say, and also a lot of this sounds like me. Th it sounds like I don't think he's really good. I think if we sign him, I think we're getting a really, really good player who'll be able to, f who is probably the closest thing to, in inverted commas, a win Alden replacement that we could get. And you get the impression that pretty much most managers in world football could say to him, I need you to go and do this for 90 minutes and he'll go and do it really well. Whatever that is, as long as the manager's got it right, he will impress. And I think that that's what we're looking to buy with this one. I think the others are almost, when you're talking about what's a superpower, I think the others are your superpower footballer, conceivably. I think this one is the one who very much is. He will do a really good 8 out of 10 as to whatever the manager said to do. York Schmacker then, uh, thanks to Rob uh, for the gutter. Presum Phil was on as well. Um, you know, other, thing, other things happened. Um, York Schmacker then. Um, I, so... It doesn't feel sexy, but I don't sort of know how a director of football does, uh, or a sporting director, or we didn't know what the, what the job title is, for God's sake. I don't know quite how it does, but also I like that it's all a bit shaggy dog, and that might not be the spirit for a, for a, for a, you know, a, a, an organisation that turns over over 500 million a year, but I just, I sort of like the idea we end up every now and again with some waifs and strays, and, <laughs> and, and they muck in. Uh, and everyone gets on. I like the idea that he's quite a combustible personality because I actually think you probably need that to do that job with Jurgen Klopp. You probably need to be someone who's prepared to say, shut the fuck up yeah. from time to time, um, as much as we might not like that because we love Jurgen to pieces. But I think the idea that someone who will fight his own corner is going to be important. And if he's that guy, great. I, I just, maybe it's a bit of from us doing the Klopp documentary where, you know, George here and, and Fuad, they went out and they met all these old German fellows who've all got similar sense of, senses of humour and they all seem genuinely quite likeable but also quite robust. I don't know. I'm just sort of into it. I'm glad I feel as though there's an element of something being sorted. Yeah, there's a bit of confusion to me. There's, there's some recent stories about it, it just being a sort of a temporary thing, uh, which which I'm not really into. Like, if he's the fellow, just get him in. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not really sure on this idea that he's coming in now. It's more of a consultant. It all, yeah. all feels a bit sort of, you know, the fellow who went to United and it didn't work out at all. And, and yeah. now he was like, oh, he's going to do this for a bit and then do that. And then in the end, he's now doing nothing. So I'd rather, if they think he's the fellow, just, just get in, him in and, and sort of give the job. So I don't really sort of understand that. You know, it'd be nice yep. to have a bit more of a clarity about about you know what well, first of all is he coming, but what's he coming in to do, and what's the role, and, and is it sort of permanent or or until they look for something else. So some have some clarity on that. It'd be good, I think. But but generally speaking, I'm with you. I think listen, we don't understand exactly. I don't, don't understand, but we don't know exactly what the, the remit of the role is because I think they do, they do vary club to club and they obviously vary depending on who the manager is. I think they probably vary person <laughs> to person as well. I suspect yeah, it's a bit 100%. of one of those jobs that you can you can sort of define a bit yourself, yeah. only a little bit, but it might be that this time, you know, Mike Gordon and Jurgen Klopp might want something that's a little bit different from the last time or the time yeah. before. Yeah. Also, he might come in and say, well, this bit, this bit, this bit, that's the bit I want to do. This bit I'm less sure on. Can we, can we hire someone else into that space or reinterpret this? You know what I mean? I don't think... I think Trying to think, get, trying to give it overall clarity and act like we get to know because we don't get to watch him play. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. We don't get to watch him do. So yeah. you've just got to sort of go from there. Yeah, and also you've got to reflect on, on sort of you know the jobs he's been doing in the past. You know, in terms of like, well, what was the role there and how was it different? And I've seen people putting up lists of players he's bought and stuff, and I'm thinking, listen, I'm sure he'd love Sadio Mane. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, if, if, the, if, the, if the chance would have come, yeah. like I'm sure he would have loved to buy him. But he was cutting his cloth where he is. I'm with you. I think the personality is more important. I think also as well. There might be a bit of Jürgen wanting to, you know, I'm hearing a lot to him like he's outspoken, you know, he's, yep. he'll sort of come out and, and, and speak. I think there's a bit of Jürgen who's sick of all that. Like, do you know what I mean? It's noticeable to me. There's a bit of like, oh, he's trying to get people to sing his song less and stuff like that. Like he's, I think he's a bit done in with, I'm not saying this fella's going to start doing press conferences or something, but you know, if something happens where we need a Liverpool spokesman, and fuck it, hell, none of them mutes are gonna do it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like we're, we're not gonna hear, you know, from any of the any of the Boston lot who don't talk. Um, and so I think there's a there's a little bit of him who's gone. Do you know what else I won't mind? Someone who can go out and talk about the the, the national anthem. Yeah. 
Do you know what I mean? Someone like that, someone who can go out and talk about these all this madness that seems to constantly surround Liverpool Football Club that I just can't really be bothered with. And that's not the, the, the really big stuff, like some stuff like, like he's done some stuff on Eurovision, which is box. I think he likes that. Do you know, like the yeah. stuff like outside football. And like, I think he takes like, you know, I think he, he, he likes, you know, doing this stuff on the Eurovision, welcoming everyone to Liverpool, like being a bit funny with it. I think he likes stuff like that. I don't think he minded at all talking about, you know, in lockdown and stuff like that, like, you know, being a bit of a leader on that. But but I think all the all the nonsense and the, and the stuff that, you know, we, there's a bit of there is a bit of a general conversation in in this league at the moment and around football, around you know, are we asking these managers? Like Conte brought it up, didn't he? Yeah. You know, that's the kind of thing that Conte was talking about. I don't think it's a, a bad thing to have a sporting director, you know, who's very different from Michael Edwards in that regard, who will come out and say like, this is this is this is the football club's position. This is why we started to do this, so the manager can just manage. Um, just as sort of as an adjunct to that, I think also the idea is, you know, the on that the not head case point. I don't want to take it too far, but. Um, the robust points I sort of feel as though the club at the minute I talked about it on gutter we're very much I think bedding in for a, for a big season of hitting the grounds running and for a big load of us against them a little bit I feel as though us against them has come back uh, a tiny little bit I think it disappeared somewhere post uh, the, the way in which last season finished um, maybe I'm just reading too much into it but you know, I understand all the stuff with referees at the minute. I actually understand that some people find it a little bit distasteful. But I feel as though, you know, rightly or wrongly, we've got a big gang of lads at the minute and a manager and a staff behind them, I think, who do feel a bit like we're going to have to stick it to everyone. If we're going to do what we want to do next season, we're going to have to stick it to everyone over and over again. Yeah, this fella feels a bit like that. That's what I mean, well, yeah. And, and so he's sort of part of that. And I think, you know, again, you know, to bring it back to Jürgen, not feeling like he's fighting every battle, he must feel like he's he's doing that at the moment and he could do with someone, you know, alongside him who's, who's maybe able to sort of, you know, go to these things and, and, and say, why have we got this referee seven times? He clearly hates us. Can't we have some of these other ones? Yeah. I know they're all from Manchester. Can we just have a different man for a bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that, that sort There's of thing. There's North Manchester, East <laughs> Manchester, West Manchester, <laughs> South Manchester. Can we shake it up? Yeah, can we shake it up a bit yeah. rather than have the same, you know, man? It's all right, the Northern Quarter, <laughs> that sort of thing. Yeah, a fellow who likes chops, we'll have him. And yeah. so, so that's <laughs> that, that sort of thing, you know. You know, I think sort of could be useful. So, so we'll we'll see. I like the fact that they like the same band as well. Yeah. Like apparently that's how the mates go into the same band. I had to Google the band. I thought it was a joke. Yeah. But no, they're real. It's like it's like it's like how loads and loads of the uh, the, the people who are in in aspect of our sector of the football stuff all like to hold steady. <laughs> uh, it's like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what, what do you do? Talk about football? Not really. Yeah, we're into this we're into this niche end event. I'm trying to sort out seeing uh, Duncan Alexander next week. I've got an idea. That's what I want to talk to him about. But ultimately, I want to talk about the hold steady. Uh, that's the way in which that yeah, sort of thing works. Uh, it's a great way to spend your life. Listen, subscribe to the Anfield Wrap. Enjoy all of this. I'm very. So just for the US audience, do Google it. I am very conscious that there might be a lot of people in the United States who are a bit like, what on earth actually is this and how does it work? And is it as camp as you say? And the answer to that is an emphatic yes. You've got the endorsement of John Gibbons and Dan Austin, for God's sake. <laughs> uh, it doesn't mean much more than that to sort of clarify all of that sort of thing. Uh, it is a fantastic festival. It is obviously inherently political this year. It's inherently political every year because that's what happens when you bring lots and lots of countries together. It's brilliant that Liverpool's part of the whole thing. We want Liverpool to be part of everything. We want Liverpool to be part of your we want Liverpool in the European Cup. It's the Anfield wrap. There's loads and loads and loads still to do.